bunch of reading crybabies got mad that Greece was, I don't know, fiction and out of date and you know, you know the usual drill. We have an update on that. I did a video on that last December, I want to say, how a certain, certain reading crybaby masses on social media got upset with a movie for not being part of today's wokier than thou culture, for being a product of its time, reflecting another time period. Yes, that's right, we're talking about Greece and love it or hate it. I'm in the, you know, I might have to give it another shot. I don't have the fondest memories of it, but then again, I'm a music snob. I am such a hipster, I don't like anything. Who am I? I am Becca Random 42, the one, the only, the original, your favorite YouTube consumer advocate. Harpy, I complain about things because I know you like them. And I know, I know that if I complain loud enough, your favorite things won't get destroyed or censored or, or cut, edited, get warning labels slapped on them. We're adults and we can handle having differences of opinion. We're adults and we can see that even if you, even if you don't even like Greece, you can still defend the damn thing for being a product of its time. It is fun. It is a musical. It is fiction. It's a love story. It's, it's set to music to, to define a moment in time where people, where people were a little, a little less woke, a little less shitty to each other in, in they were shitty to each other in different ways back then. Because let's face it, these wokier than thou's are pretty damn shitty to people. I've been on the receiving end of it. You've been on the receiving end of it. People like Gina Carano have been on the receiving end of it. And soon enough, they're going to come after Olivia Newton-John for speaking up against their backlash. Oh, that's right. Olivia Newton-John played Sandy herself in Greece. A living legend. Somebody who I think everybody can agree with has had an amazing career from a musical career to acting. And now she's hitting back at the woke warriors saying that Greece, the, the woke warriors are saying this, not Olivia Newton-John, that Greece is ist and apey and homophobic and slut shaming. And why did I say apey? I don't know. I'm trying to censor that word because I don't think you're allowed to say it. And that doesn't mean anything else. I'm just trying to censor the word. So get that out. Now I got to censor myself. Because of what some random moron on social media is going to think I said. That's why we're tired of this stuff. That's why we're, we're, we're done. We're done bending and caving to the little wokier than wokes. To the mob of people who just, just need to lighten the crap up. Lighten up. Smoke them if you got them. It is 425 in the afternoon. Have some fun. Relax with your life. Smoke weed every day. People aren't coming to get you. They're not looking in your, not, not so much anymore. They're not looking at your windows, looking and seeing what you're, nobody cares what you're doing in your day-to-day -day life. And if you want to enjoy something like Grease, go right ahead, go right ahead. Who's, who are you trying to impress by calling it, calling it istorphobic? Who are you trying to impress? Some asshole on social media that you're never going to meet in your life? Why do we care what these people say? I don't care what these people say and I will fight them every second to not allow them to think that they have some sort of control over us. And that's the problem. That's the problem. The more we care what these people think, the more control they actually have. We got to stop. We got to fight them back. We got to nip this in the bud and we got to say, look, if you don't like it, don't watch it. If you don't like it, don't watch it. You don't have the control over any one of us. We're adults. We made the choice to watch this. We know the difference between right and wrong. We're not a bunch of children who need warning labels and need, need all these things on our favorite movies or TV shows from the past. We understand that things are different. We understand that times change and what might be offensive one moment may not be offensive the next. Hey, it might be offensive in 20 years from now to change your gender. Have you ever thought of that? They might call it gender or gender appropriation or something stupid. So let's, let's take that into a consideration. Let's take that into account that what people are fighting and complaining about today might be entirely outdated 20 years from now, 30 years from now, five years from now, next week, next week, these rules of the wokey wokes constantly change. They constantly twist and bend and it, it just gets annoying. It gets really irritating. Olivia Newton-John has hit back after cancel culture warriors criticized her iconic role in the film Grease. Her kind of film, not her role specifically. I'm adding, I'm interjecting, I'm skipping down. They criticized her iconic film 
After the movie aired on British TV over the Christmas holidays, it was criticized on social media because, because a bunch of wokey wokes don't understand that times were different. The times were different. And guess what? Guess what? These are the same people who go on social media looking at a picture of the Kobayashi dragon made chick and saying, why are her, why, why is, why is, why is a humanized version of a dragon have ginormous? Because, because that's how it was drawn and written and just stop already, just stop. These are the same people who actually do actively, actively complain and re and criticize and go, where are her organs? If you have a, a curvaceous or, or it's very slim waisted person with, with very curvy and exaggerated body parts in some instances, they get mad over everything. So why are we listening to these people? They're mad about everything. Why do we take what they say as anything other than just a bunch of noise and a bunch of screaming children? That's where we're at with this. We, we should just treat them like the screaming children that they are and throw them in the corner to sit there and think about what they did by, by blocking them, muting them, criticizing them. Clap back. I do. I clap back all the time. I say, how is it that you say this thing to me, but you're supposed to be better than me because they usually come with some sort of physical appearance shaming. They usually come at you with some thing to hurt you because they're the morally superior ones. Of course they are. Of course they are. Speaking to a Life of Greatness podcast, 72 year old actress. She looks great for 72. Holy crap. I didn't realize she was that old. I thought she was maybe like, see, in my head, she's still like 40. <laughs> The 72-year-old actress was too happy to defend Greece against the new generation of woke millennials and Zoomers. And these, ser seriously, I'm Gen X. I, lo I look younger than I am. Millennials, we, we failed you. I'm sorry we didn't tell you that some things you gotta let go, some things you're not going to fix overnight, and some things are going to change. I'm sorry we didn't set you up for life. I'm sorry we didn't teach a one of you to balance a checkbook, pay your own bills, be useful members of society. And there's many millennials that are. There's many millennials who do what they need to do anyway. And I applaud those people. But we do have this whole faction of people who just sit there on social media all day looking for things to complain about. And then you got people like me who look for ways to Complain about the complainers. So I don't know. I don't think I'm much better in a lot of ways. Also, ooh, she's got a nice guitar collection behind her. Olivia said of the backlash, I think it's kind of silly. I mean, this movie was made in the 70s about the 50s. Yes, yes, this is what I said. This is exactly what I said. It's from the, it's from the 70s, from before you and I was born, about the 1950s. About the 1950s. It's a completely different time period. Things are going to be different. And not only that, not only that, they're, one of the big complaints was that, that she, that her character Sandy converted in the end to being this, this hot chick in the, in the black pleather pants, you know, the, the fake leather. And they're complaining that she changed who she was to be with the guy. Forgetting, forgetting entirely that Danny, John Travolta's character, also changed who he was and made himself more appealing to her by joining track, getting a letter jacket, doing more than being a greaser who was just obsessed with cars and driving and all, and, uh, and I guess dancing. Dancing was the other big thing in Greece. It's been a while since I watched it. I've got it on my shelf out there. But like I said, it's one of those movies I really, really have to be in the mood for anymore. And the music is not my, my cup of tea for the most part. It's a movie about the 70s made, or about the 50s made in the 70s, exactly. It was a stage play. It's a musical. It's fun. It's a fun movie musical not to be taken so seriously. <laughs> the singer and medicinal med marijuana campaigner. Why not just recreational? Just legalize it for everyone. I am lucky, lucky enough to be in a state where it's legal. Probably why I stutter and stammer so much. But the more I find out about Olivia Newton-John, the more I like her. She seems to have a really good head on her shoulders, and she seems to be somebody really admirable to call out this crap, to call out this crap. She also seems to be somebody who cares, cares about people. Care. That's, that's one of these things that these little wokier-than-thous never do. They don't actually care. They want to fight. The singer and medicinal 
marijuana campaigner went on to say that people take pop culture too seriously these days. They do. They do. It's just a fun movie. You don't need to read into a social message and absolutely everything. Not everything needs to be political. Not everything needs to be social commentary. Sometimes you just want to have a fun movie about a guy and a gal getting together, having fun, dancing, singing. That's it. We need to relax a little bit and enjoy the things for what they are, she said. I didn't see it like that at all. I think it's a fun movie that entertains people. Grease was one of the highest grossing films of the 1970s and went on to become a Hollywood classic. See, she has the right idea. That's one of these things that these little wokier than nows don't understand is that as you get older, stuff seems so much less important. It really, really does. Like the little stupid things that you complain about on a day-to-day basis don't actually matter in the real world. What matters is, are you happy? Do you have food on the table? Do you have a roof over your head? Do you, do you have a group of people who love you no matter what you do? Do you love people no matter what they do? Do you have friends and family who you can reach out to and connect to on a daily basis that are not just a bunch of random bots on Twitter? They're not just a bunch of nameless, faceless accounts with a picture of whatever superhero they're worshiping that minute or whatever rock star that they think that they identify with or whatever TV show that they've told they need to see themselves as or represented by. Because that's a great way to further perpetuate stereotypes by saying, oh, well, you need a black lesbian character in your show about a superhero or else you can't watch it because all black lesbians are this and this and that. That is why I don't like a lot of this wokier than thou culture. They don't understand things. They have no life experience. And we're supposed to listen to the most ring, screamingest, brattiest, youngest, less experienced, least experienced people on this planet. And it gets very, very old. It gets very, very tiresome. When the film aired on the BBC in December 26th, more than four decades after its cinematic release, many young people were outraged by the high school antics. (laughs) Uh, Of course they were. Of course they were. Keep in mind, these are like, what, 35-year-olds playing high school. How old was Stalker Channing? She was over 30 when she played Rizzo in Greece. In the final scene, student Sandy, played by Olivia Newton-John, ditches her good girl image for her skin-tight PVC trousers and takes up smoking so she can impress Danny. She's not really taking up smoke. She's just holding a cigarette and she doesn't really even know how to, how to inhale. She needs to be instructed on how to put it out all sexy-like. Because that was the thing. How many, how many of these people did, did, did they realize that the Flintstones did cigarette commercials back in the day? Uh, Winston tastes good, like a cigarette should you had, it was socially approved and acceptable. You had doctors making smoking adverts back then in the 50s, in the 50s when this was taking place. So it wouldn't be out of line to see a woman smoking, thinking it's sexy, thinking it's, and she, she didn't put it out too immediately. And I don't think she went back to it. She didn't actually pick up the habit. She was just trying to look cool because that was a time when cigarette smoking was quote unquote looking cool. And now looking cool is being part of the little social media hate mobs. That's how you look cool now, which is so lame. And but comparison, look, how, look how lame it looks to, to have somebody smoking to look cool in an old movie, right? Don't you see that? And you're like, oh, that's kind of lame. That's kind of outdated. Yeah, in five years, you little wokey wokes on Twitter are going to be looking pretty outdated. Pretty outdated. Mark my words as somebody who is old enough to know better. It prompted the outrage, one outraged Twitter user to write, Greece is far too ist to overlay and, and overly white. Oh, really? So they don't like white people either. Greece is far too sexist and overly white and should be banned from the screen. It's nearly 2021 after all. <laughs> Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. So, so, th- and this, this is the problem. This is the problem. People who are offended by learning how something might have been, and, and yeah, you're overthinking it. It's Greece. You're overthinking it. You don't know shit about shit. Shut your goddamn mouth, Twitter user. Another furious viewer complained. Greece sucks at so many levels. The message is pure misogyny. Oh no, no, there's plenty of reasons to hate Greece if you don't like it. I'm one of those people. I never did like some of the music, like. Summer lovin', I've, I've already talked about it. It sounds like a bunch of chickens clucking, and if you don't believe me... <laughs> a third user is saying, Grease is the most sexist piece of shit. One scene that caused particular offense to the youthful, youthful viewers was one when Putsy, one of Danny's, Danny's friends of the Teeper gang, positioned himself on the floor to look up the skirts of two female students of the fictional Rydell High School. Yeah, Pee Wee Herman did it also in the 80s on the Pee Wee Herman HBO special. 
And again, probably on the one he he brought back to HBO, I want to say. So, guys want to look up girl skirts sometimes. And yeah, it's a little creepy. That's the point. That's the point. The guy was the creepo. He wasn't going to get the girl. He was the loser that they didn't date and sleep with. I guess he got one of them, didn't he? Didn't he get one of the girls? It's, like I said, it's been a while since I, I, I watched Grease. Other viewers complain about the lyric. Did you put up a fight? It rhymes. It rhymes. All right. It rhymes with night for crying out loud. For crying out loud. And half of the time, these girls who do only do that so they don't get so so they don't feel so they don't feel loose and easy, or because they like to play with the boys' emotions. Because they like to play with the fact that if you say no enough times. It drives him nuts, and, and it means you can have your way with him, and you can get him to do whatever the crap you want him to do if you say no a few times. Did they not know? Th this is why you need to teach these girls something, because they don't know crap about crap. No wonder they're undateable, 30-year-old, grown women children sitting on social media watching cartoons about She-Ra, <coughs> or, or whatever the other new thing is, that Aquaman thing, yelling about how bad millennials are. Ew. Because they're grown children. They are, in fact, the very definition of the basement dwellers that they like to complain about, aren't they? When Grease was released in 78, film censors gave it an A rating, the equivalent of today's PG. The film still carries a PG with a warning of frequent mild references and mild language. Like I said, you're reading too much in to a movie that is, that is just a fun little bit of entertainment and love it or hate it. It is a classic and we can't deny the fact that it has a huge following, a huge fan base. Lighten up. The more the more they complain, the more I want to watch it. So tell me what you guys think in the comment section below. I am MechaRandom42, and I'll see you guys on the next video, live stream, or wherever. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, make sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye. <laughs>